so thank you very much for the invitation to speak here. Uh, so I want to speak about <coughs> uh, well, yeah. So what I'm going to speak today about is joint uh, with um, Colmez and Dospinescu. Okay. Um, right. Uh, and uh, Dospinescu is going to speak after me. Um, uh, so the second talk this morning, and I'll explain a part of the argument, uh, and he'll explain a different part of the argument. Yeah, so what is the argument about? So let's see. So, so G is GL2QP. OK, and uh, so P is any prime. So this, the fact that this P is allowed to be anything is essential, well, kind of is the main point of this uh, talk. And then we prove the following theorem that if I look at pi, uh, so, so these are pan admissible GL, uh, so these are absolutely irreducible, uh, non-ordinary. Uh, yeah, so I'll come back to uh, these words uh, and look at isomorphism classes. They're naturally bijec in bijection with rho GQP, GL2L. So this is continuous, absolutely irreducible. Uh, and also take isomorphism classes. Ah, so what is L? So L is coefficient, so L over QP is some finite extension. Um, yeah, so I have some ring of integers, a uniformizer, and then the residue field is called little k. Uh, and then, so this, this thing, these are uh, admissible unitary L Banach space representations of G. Um, OK, so now absolutely reducible. This means that if I take a Banach space and I ex extend uh, scalars to a finite extension, um, is, but this is irreducible for all L prime over L finite. OK. Um, yeah, so this is what absolutely reducible means. And then non-ordinary means the following, uh, that pi is not a subquotient of in BG uh, chi continuous for any uh, chi B L prime. Okay, so such rep representations came up in uh, in the second talk uh, yesterday, um, and. Um, and, such a, and sub quotients of such representations, we call them ordinary. Okay, so this is um, the name is motivated by this emittance functor of ordinary parts, which was explained yesterday. So we look at non-ordinary things. Ah, so now this is just not, although this will not play such a big role for my talk, but uh, this bijection is just not any any bijection, but uh, the way it works. You take this pi, and there is, uh, to this pi, you can apply so-called Colmesis Montreal functor, which is kind of uh, somewhat magical, and, and you get uh, a Galois representation. So this will be explained in more detail in uh, uh, Dospinescu's talk. Yeah, so it's really great giving a first talk. You can claim yeah, all sorts of things. It will be explained in the second one. Uh, 
so now, <coughs> ah, so I guess I did it wrong. So what I should remark is that um, that this was not this was known uh, for p greater equal to five, um, but now the proof uh, this proof is different. This proof is is, is different. Good. Uh, right. So maybe uh, uh, yeah. So before I go into details, for the proof for p greater equal to five is kind of a characteristic p proof, and this proof is a characteristic zero proof. Uh, so maybe um, maybe this will become apparent. Uh, so ah. So ah. So now you see what I, what I want to explain today is a part of the argument, and so let me call this uh, theorem 2, which is the following. So if I have pi such Banach space representation, and I assume that it's absolutely irreducible, and then uh, I, I choose some theta inside pi, so uh, this is unit ball ball uh, with respect to um, uh, some g invariant norm uh, norm on pi, right? Because this representation is unitary, uh, so um, I can I can choose the exists. I mean by um, very, uh, the word unitary means that there exists a g-invariant norm which defines a topology on pi. So I just pick one and I look at the unit ball, which is, gets called capital theta. Uh, and then the assertion is either one, uh, when, I, uh, when I reduce this modulo of a uniformizer, this unit ball in a Banach space representation, I get a smooth, re smooth representation in characteristic P. So um, in many a session, this, this is isomorphic to pi, irreducible, super singular. Or two, so if I reduce this module of a uniformizer, and I semi-simplify, this is contained in the following. So I have n b chi 1, chi 2, omega inverse. I semi-simplify n b g chi 2 tends to chi 1, omega inverse. I semi-simplify. Uh, uh, for some, chi 1, chi 2, qp times, uh, so these are smooth characters. OK, right, so now, uh, so this notation means that I take a Borel, so um, these are just upper triangular matrices. So this is a character of Borel, which sends, uh, well, a matrix A, B, 0, D to chi 1 of A and chi 2 omega inverse of D. Now, this, what is omega? Omega omega of x is equal to x uh, modulo p for all x in qp times. So uh, this is what I would like to explain. Uh, how we kind of uh, prove this. But before doing this, uh, let me also mention how this relates to, uh, to the next talk. So uh, you see, when I apply this functor v to pi, it's essentially the same as applying this uh, 
func tau to theta and by inverting p. Okay? But now, uh, um, so now v of theta is um, some module, some uh, O module of actually finite rank, and you can read off the rank by applying v to re reduction of theta modulo the uniformizer. And now, because you know this explicitly, and you know uh, what is v of pi, and what is v of this uh, principal series things, you can conclude the following. Uh, if pi uh, so this is absolutely irreducible, then uh, dimension L v of pi is e equals to 2. And then equality, if, um, if and only if, pi is uh, non-ordinary. Okay. So a priori, you have no control on the dimension of this on this uh, space. So a priori could be, say, infinite dimensional, right? But once you get some control on the reduction, uh, you can control uh, well on this thing. And once you have this result, you can um, then apply a different uh, construction due to uh, Colmes, and then developed by Colmes and Dospinescu, which to two-dimensional Galois representation associates um, well a representation of GL2QP. Right? Uh, okay. So let's see. So I think I did this in the wrong order. Uh, General properties of what? Yeah, so this is IV reducible. This, this thing, uh, uh, yeah, so I should have said, said this. This thing, gen for generic chi and chi 2, this thing is irreducible. This principle here is irreducible. It can happen that uh, the whole thing has either 2, 3, or 4. No, no, I'm not asking this specific, just the general theory of representations of something. Like if you start from a band of what you call admissible uh, unitary? Nothing is known. Is it a finite length modulo pi? No. no, I mean, it's not known. But it is admissible, OK. Yeah. It is only known to be admissible. Well, it's known to be admissible, but you cannot deduce this of that is finite length. OK. Basically, you d I mean, if you do representation theory over C, you know that admissible plus finally generated implies finite length. In mod p, you don't have such a statement. In general, in in representation theory of PID groups modulo p, uh, but it is finitely generated. Uh, well, you can. So we know that it's admissible. Um, let's see. So at least you know that it's uh, locally finite. <laughs> if you take if you take a well. Wait, so hang on. So I'm getting confused between the particular case I'm dealing with, GL2QP, and the general case. So in general case, it's not known that much, right? It's only known that's admissible. So for example, the notion of irreducibility, if you start from a vector, you know it generates, uh, you start from a vector, non zero vector, and take the, what do you know about the thing generated by it? Is it uh, you know that it's admissible representation and, and that is finally generated. No, no, but the irreducibility is just algebraic. So for mod p representation, it's always just an uh, uh, algebraic notion. For the Banach space representation, it's a topological notion. So if you start with a non-zero vector and take the, the O module generated, the closure of the O module generated by it, is it uh, of no? Uh, no? OK, maybe I can answer the same. No, I mean, I think even basically all the troubles, I think, well, maybe, I think even if a group is ZP, then it's already you kind of see that nothing is that straightforward, right? 
but okay, so let me let me proceed with this. Uh, oh. Okay, so what do I want to say now? Uh, so in fact, um, it it makes me feel better, you know. <laughs> 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 Let's see. So, what I want to explain is uh, how to put, uh, how to bound multiplicity of pi in some ir. So, I take an irreducible smooth representation. Uh, over k, so let's say absolutely reducible, uh, and I want to this is what I want to explain, and, and theta like in this theorem. So basically, uh, so to prove this theorem, I need to bound multiplicity for each uh, irreducible representation. So this is one, and two, I need to be able to say but given that pi occurs as a sub-quotient, sub I have to uh, basically have a bound on which other reducible sub can occur. So this, is, so this last part is done by a theory, a theory of blocks, and it works, I mean, pretty much the same way as in representation theory of finite groups. So I don't want to explain this. Uh, what I want to explain is this boundedness argument. Okay, so now, so let's see. So I have this smooth representations, G, on all torsion modules. So this is anti-equivalent to a certain category, mod profinite augmented, GO. And this, is, this anti-equivalence is done like this. I take uh, some representation, and I map it to its um, on Triagin dual, so this is hom o tau l o. And on this thing, I put a compact open topology. Okay. Uh, so one can, um, one can describe exactly what these things are, but for the purpose of the talk, I mean, I just take a discrete thing and I take this Pontryagin dual, right? So I get something compact. So in here, I have this category of more locally admissible representations. So this was uh, explained uh, in the second uh, talk uh, yesterday. So this category is due to Emerton, and this just means that for every V in a polarization, every vector, I, if, if I look at the representation generated by it, uh, this is admissible. So now, So this, this, this gives me some category C, okay? By definition, just like whatever I get by taking Pondragon dual of this thing. So what I, right, so now one can show, well actually I can, for my purpose, I can actually assume this, but this automatically holds, holds that this pi is admissible. So I guess, so this is, I guess, due to Berger. Um, but pi is admissible. So this means that if I take Pontragon dual, so this lies in this category C. So now I look at P. So this is projective, uh, projective envelope of pi V in C. And then I let E to be end CP, the endomorphism ring. Okay, so um, right. So now, okay. So maybe I shouldn't do this. Maybe do this instead. So now, if I take pi. 
an admissible Banach space. And then I, take, I can take some, uh, uh, well, a unit ball as before, g invariant unit ball. And then I define m of pi. This is home uh, c in this category, p theta d, and I invert l. So let's see. So I have this, uh, unit, I have this theta. Then theta d, I simply take home O uh, theta into O. Uh, I equip this, this guy with a weak topology. So this is so-called Shikov dual of theta. And uh, the, you can sh show that admissibility of pi implies that this guy actually lies in this category C. So because this is periodic, uh, I don't have to do this. This has been pointed out uh, by several referees of my papers. <laughs> right, so let's see. Um, OK, so now, uh, yeah, well. So let's see. So what I have is a following proposition, which says the following. So one, that this m pi is a finely generated E1 over p module. So this condition of admissibility translates into finely generateness. Um, two. Now, if I look at dimension L of m pi of this module, this is the same thing as dimension k of uh, p theta. I reduce this module of a uniformizer, so I get something discrete. And I take the, its Pontragon dual. And this is the same as, ah, yeah. Uh, home. Yeah, sorry. Uh, um, yeah. Dim. Okay. And you see now this P is a projective hull of this irreducible, um, well, of this pi V. So now. So this guy, you can actually determine that this is multiplicity of uh, pi in theta modulo semi-simplified. OK. So you can actually read off a multiplicity if you know the dimension of this module. So this is 1. And then part three says if this pi is absolutely irreducible, then uh, part A, this MP is absolutely irreducible, E1 over P module, B, uh, and G cont pi. So this, this m is a functor. So if I have an endomorphism, a G equivariant endomorphism of a Banach space, this induces uh, uh, an endomorphism of this module. So this induces a map. And the assertion is that this is an isomorphism. OK. OK, so now this statement looks kind of a little bit scary. But basically, the proof works like this. You imagine that G is a finite group. Uh, and then you can just prove this by saying using the book of Serre on, on representation theory of finite groups. And then you look at this proof, and you realize that exactly the same uh, argument works, except that um, to deal with um, 
issues of uh, duals, continuity, and periodic functional analysis, you have to use a uh, paper of Schneider and Teitelbach. Oops. Uh, let's see. So, um, okay. Okay, so now, so this is maybe not so hard. Well, given. Um, what do you write in this category, modes of loyalty? What is the single form? Pardon me? Uh, what did you write? Uh, the anti equivalence goes to mod, lower G, and then what was the single above? Pro augmented. Pro augmented. Yeah, so this is profinite augmented. So if, if G was a compact group, a compact periodic analytic group, so this profinite augmented would be simply compact, uh, I mean, linear topological modules over the group algebra. So in my situation, uh, G is not a compact group. So one has to do a little bit of extra things, yeah? But essentially, uh, this is what it is. Okay. So let's see. Right, so now I want to explain one, one easy cor corollary of this. The theorem. If E is commutative, dimension of L M pi, so pi, yeah, so pi is absolutely irreducible. Yeah, so I want to explain how to deduce uh, from this proposition. So first of all, I let script E be the image of E 1 over P in this end uh, L M of pi. So uh, I mean, I may assume that um, I may assume that M pi is no, and zero, assume, I mean, if it is zero, there's nothing to prove. So now I know, so what do I know? So this is, this is commutative. <coughs> this is the image of which one? Uh, well, it's just, I have, I mean, this is an, a module over this ring, and I just take a linear endomorphism. Oh, I see. Okay. Uh, right. So I know that the image is commutative because this ring is commutative by assumption. So now, so this implies that this E is contained in uh, end. E one over p uh, of this m pi, okay, but this is isomorphic by this proposition part three b b to end g uh, pi op. Now here I can use Schur's lemma. Lemma. Uh, so the Schwarz lemma is not a triviality, but so it is a theorem of uh, Dospinescu and Schren, uh, building on, on work of recent work of Ardukov and Wadsley, that the endomorphism ring of this thing is simply L, because pi is absolutely irreducible. Okay, so then, so basically I can c conclude that this E is equal to L, but now I know that. Uh, um, because pi is absolutely irre irreducible, 
implies, again, by this proposition that uh, this m pi absolutely irreducible script E module, and then, because the ring is simply L, this has to be a one-dimensional vector space. So from this, I conclude that dimension L m pi is equal to 1. And I mean, once I conclude this, I can then further conclude uh, pi occurs with multiplicity 1 in, uh, in theta, right, by, by using uh, pi 2 of a proposition. Yeah? So this kind of is also an easy consequence. OK, so now I don't want to write this down. But in this proposition, I assume uh, that the ring is commutative. So this commutativity can be expressed that for every ordered tuple of elements phi 1 and phi 2, phi 1, phi 2 minus phi 2, phi 1 is equal to 0. And there's no uh, <coughs> way to argue with that. But now you can generalize this uh, to the following identity. You take, instead of taking two elements, you take two D elements. And then you require, so this is remark, if for all 2D, so now I take 2D elements, and I take sine of sigma, and here I uh, compose them to d is equal to 0, then one can conclude in the same way, well, OK. So this is, uh, in this thing, I have to use a theorem of Kaplansky. So this would mean. I argue similarly, but now I look at this E, and from this identity, I can deduce that E is a, a ring of polynomial identity. And uh, so then I can argue that the center of this ring is L. And then, uh, I mean, basically, Kaplansky's theorem, uh, this assertion follows from Kaplansky's theorem. OK, so so far, so good. Uh, OK, so how am I doing? OK, so that's not too bad. Now, OK, so how to, so I have this abstract proposition. And I know if a ring is commutative, um, then uh, I can conclude something. So now, how about, so how to prove this commutativity of a string in, in, in some situations. Oops. Uh, yeah, so how do I prove, um, how do I get a hand on this case? And the argument is, kind of by the risky density. Okay, so this doesn't mean anything yet. But hopefully, uh, right, so now density. Um, so now there is a family of representations where I can control this m pi. So these representations uh, have been uh, basically been studied by uh, Berger and Broy. Broy. So now I look at, I give myself, say, I have some finite field extension. And then I have some delta 1, delta 2, qp times to L prime star, some unramified, some unramified characters. 
And I guess I want to assume that delta 1 times the norm is not equal to delta 2. So then do this thing. I can define uh, uh, a smooth, so the usual, the usual um, smooth principle series representation. So this is just a smooth pr principle series representations uh, on, on L prime vector space. And then uh, additionally, I take V of a form sim um, A, say L um, squared tends uh, dead B. An algebraic representation, and uh, I let pi. Okay, so I can tensor these things. So now, so this is a locally algebraic representation, and uh, I can consider its universal unitary completion. Uh, so this is universal unitary completion. So this universal unitary completion, this means that if I have a G-equivariant map of Psi tensor V into some Banach space, then it automatically factors through a continuous map uh, of this Banach space. So now, so far this is just introducing notation, but now, um, um, so what is the statement uh, of the theorem then pi? Uh, is admissible G L prime representation and absolutely irreducible and uh, theorem 2 holds for pi. You are unhappy? I was just saying, and pi is not zero. Uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. OK. But of course, this doesn't really play a role in, in anything. I mean, <laughs> I mean, this makes the statement wrong, but not, not the, doesn't validate the statements that come afterwards. Uh, yes? You have no condition on delta one that you talk for. Yeah, so this this has been pointed out by by Laurent that uh, because I don't put any conditions except for this one, uh, the universal unitary completion might be zero. Uh, but this doesn't really matter for me. I mean, this universal unitary completion is just done like like this. I take some. Yes, I see that. I mean, what are you asserting then? It, it uh, uh, so this been. I have to assume that pi is non-zero. Yeah, sorry. So, yeah, sorry. Uh, maybe if pi is non equal to zero, then. Well, formally it's true for zero as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I wouldn't want to spend uh, too much time with this. Actually, you're right, you're right. That's what I was thinking about. <laughs> That's terrible. Uh, OK, so now I still have uh, 20 minutes, I hope. Um, OK, so now, so I have this, I know that this theorem 2 holds for pi. So this means that if I choose a unit ball and I reduce the semi simplify, uh, well, it satisfies kind of, well, one of these things. and. So to illustrate the argument, I want to assume from now on, now on, assume pi is super singular. So this basically means that uh, this pi is not a sub quotient of these uh, principal series representations. So then. Uh, so the theorem of berger broglie then implies that dimension L, well, L M prime of M P 
is less than or equal to 1. Because pi occurs in the reduction with multiplicity at most 1. OK. Uh, so as a result, we kind of deduce that image e 1 over p in and L, L prime of m pi. So this is L prime is commutative. Right? So this is a one dimensional L prime vector space. Uh, the action of E 1 over p on this module commutes with the action of L prime. So I get this map, and this is just a field itself, so the image is commutative. OK, so this is one point. Uh -huh. Well, I guess I don't need this anyway. So. So now, basic idea, idea, try to show that the map E 1 over P into the product. So now I take the product over all such unramified principal series, and which I define over say, different final extensions of L, and all the weights V. And uh, to this, I, I have a universal unitary completion. And here I have N L prime MP. And then you try to show that this is injective. So this implies E. 1 over p commutative. OK? Uh, because, well, all of these rings are commutative, and, and the product uh, is also commutative. So if you can show that this is an injection, you're done. Right, so now, uh, so I should say that motivation Uh, is uh, Hamilton's proof proof of the following fact. So here, in a global setting, so Hamilton says that uh, proves that classical crystalline crystalline points are dense. In the big Hecke algebra. Um, so, this is as a part of this uh, Fontaine Mesa paper. Uh, so, uh, we kind of try and run a similar argument. Uh, right, but it gets somehow complicated, a more, bit more complicated. Maybe uh, with a bit of luck, I'll explain why. Ooh. So let's see. OK, so now I have 15 minutes. So now, um, right. So you see, and because I assume that pi is super singular, v of pi is, is an irreducible two-dimensional mod p representation. So uh, 
this kind of basic idea morally, uh, well, that this injection should hold, morally says that uh, crystalline points are dense in the universal deformation ring of V of pi. Yeah, so this is. Uh, but now, okay. So now I want to sketch. Okay, so this is going to be a sketch. And step one. First of all, we know that p when I restrict it to k, ah, so k is GL2ZP. So this is projective um, OK module. OK, so uh, this is something that one has to prove. Um, but OK, but we know this, so I guess this is. Uh, uh, so this is maybe due to Emmett and myself. Uh, so once you know this, you kind of uh, prove the follow using this, you, you prove the following statement. So if uh, for all V, uh, so now you look at algebraic representations of, well, of G. So yeah, so uh, so these are re irreducible algebraic representations of GL2 over L, which I view as representations of GL2 of L. So explicitly, this, these are sim A L squared tensor that B, A is a natural number, and B an integer. Uh, right. So if for all such representations, uh, right, sorry, 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 I mean, I'm kind of getting excited. So, Okay, so have this. I take some phi in this E one over p. Okay. Now, if for all v, phi this phi kills hom continuous OK p v dual, then this phi is equal to 0. OK, so how? Uh, so this argument essentially already appears in a paper of Hamilton, so in this Fontaine Mesa paper of Hamilton. So basically, because you know that this is a projective OK module, uh, you know that this is isomorphic to a product of projective indecomposable OK modules. So then it turns out that. It's enough to actually prove the, the, the same statement with replacing P with a projective indecomposable OK module. And then it turns out uh, that it's actually enough to prove the same statement with replacing P restricted to K with simply OK, the, the completed group algebra. And then um, the statement basically uh, says that polynomial functions are dense in the space of continuous functions. So I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah, so, so as l polynomials are dense in, well, you end up looking at the Banach space KL. So continuous polynomials, or say polynomial functions, are dense in, in, in this Banach space. This is what, what the argument reduces to. Uh, so let's see. So yeah, so just like uh, uh, a Right, so now, ah, should have had it this there. So now, as a corollary 
of step one, to step one, you deduce that this ring injects into your product V of its algebraic representations um, um, E one over P AV where this AV is an annihilator uh, of this module of this HOM uh, OK continuous P V dual. So if I can show that every single every this ring is, is, is commutative, then I can conclude that this is commutative, right? So now in step two, fix, uh, fix such v, g, uh, right, so now, OK, so now I let this pi p be hom o p l continuous homomorphisms. So this is a compact O module. So this is a, a unitary Banach space where I take a supremum norm. OK. Um, right. So I should say that in, in Emittance, in analogy to Emittance work, this is a local analog of Emittance completed cohomology. OK. But now, uh, if I look at this module, hom continuous, um, well, say k uh, p p dual by Shikov's du duality. So, um, which is so due to Schneider Teitelbaum, uh, this is the same as hom k v pi p. Okay. Uh, so now, then. By Frobenius reciprocity, this is HOM G, uh, compact induction, KV G pi P. OK, so now if I la let H be the Hecke algebra and, and the morphism G of this compact induction, KGV, so, so this is. Actually, this is a very classical thing. So this is the same thing as compact induction. Um, since this thing is algebraic, uh, this is the same thing as uh, the trivial representation. And this is uh, isomorphic to Tz uh, plus minus 1. So this is commutative. So this is a nice ring. And it acts on this guy. And it acts um, on, on, on this guy. So now, well, OK, it went away, but we do this step by step. So if I take n, a maximal ideal of this Hecke algebra, and then I look um, p, p dual, I look everything that is killed by this maximal ideal n. So then. If, if, we, if you unravel these definitions, this is the same thing as HOM G kappa n, the residue field at n, H compact induction KGV pi p. This thing is a pre representation of a form I considered before, psi tensor V. 
what this psi is a ramified uh, principle series with values in this finite extension. And therefore, this is the same thing as HOM G is continuous. So now I can replace this tensor product by universal unitary completion. Okay. And then if I apply this Shikov duality again, I can deduce that this is the same as psi tensor B with functor M. So at the end, I already know by berger broglie that this thing is one dimensional over kappa n. So then I can conclude that dimension kappa n of this hom k continuous p v dual n, but this is one. Okay. Uh, so now, using this, so this is step three. If I look at endomorphism ring of H, um, so I take this continuous. P, V dual, but now I just don't think, uh, take things by kill just by n, but things kill by some power of n. But this is, but I have a suggestion on end H, E H uh, kappa n. So this is an injective hull of kappa n as an H module in the category of H modules. So now I know what this thing is explicitly. This is isomorphic to H, localized in n, and completed. So this is, I mean, there's a theory called Matlis duality. Um, stand up in local cohomology quite a lot. But this is commutative. Okay, so let me see. So I can actually start deleting some of the stuff here. So now I can actually conclude from this thing that if I take end H home continuous. K pi v dual. So now I take I take all the elements which I when I apply H to it generate a module of finite length. Okay. So this is what the subindex locally finite means. So this is isomorphic to and H. This is a product over all the maximal ideals. Of H, I have this hom cont uh, k p v dual, and here, right? So this is just Ch Chinese remainder theorem. But now, because we have different torsion, this is isomorphic to a product of n or of these. I mean, I don't have. Uh, Uh, sorry, so it should be a direct sum, right? I guess. Yeah. So um, I don't have. Um, yeah. So I don't have a map between individual things, right? So now, so this is the same as home continuous k pi v dual and infinity is commutative. So this is step three.
in step four, which just says that home k pi v dual locally finite is periodically dense in hom k continuous p v dual. So this is compact, and this is a finite dimensional vector space, so I can just take some k invariant norm on this guy, and this makes it into a Banach space. Unfortunately, I don't have enough time uh, to explain the proof of this. Uh, but if you believe this, then you can at the end conclude that you have a map E 1 over P divided by the script A V injects into a product N. Ah. Well, into this thing. Uh, commutative, and then you conclude that this ring is commutative. So then, uh, right, so then, uh, yeah, it's still there? Yes. Ah, corollary, corollary, well, ah, very good, thank you. Uh, so, so then you can conclude that this thing is, is commutative. Uh, okay, so now I would only, so this looks quite, quite complicated, right? So uh, what I'd like to say that in Hamilton's setting, because he's in a global situation, he can already stop here. Because he knows that these rings uh, is a product of fields. Okay, so he, he, do, he, he can stop here, and, and we have to work harder. Um, okay, thank you very much. Thank you for this very energetic talk. Are there questions uh, or remarks? Yes. One part of what is not commutative one. Yeah. So now, I already made remark about uh, this, uh, the, these, uh, um, uh, this Kaplansky's theorem, right? So now you see, so now, wait, so let's see, so where am I? Ah, so now when I use this result of, uh, yeah, so in this case, If, if pi is, is, is this Berger Broglie representation, then I know that m pi can be at most, and let's say it can have a dimension at most two, and let's imagine it is actually two. Okay? So then the endomorphism L of m pi, okay, these, these are just, it's just a matrix ring. And the thing is that every matrix ring satisfies this identity. Okay, uh, so this is in this case would be S four, this identity S four. So if I take four tuples and I do this, so this is a theorem of maybe Amitsul Levitsky, right? So, okay, so now, so then I could conclude that the image of my ring E one over P in there also satisfies this identity. But then, then I run the same density argument, showing that uh, that this E one over P injects into this thing. So then this identity uh, is satisfied, satisfied uh, for this ring. And I, I basically proceed then as, as in remark, uh, uh, in this remark on Kaplatsky rings. Kaplatsky's theorem, rings of polynomial identity. Other questions? Comments? Yes. When the ground field is not QP but a finite extension, <laughs> do you know today that at least the length of all these reductions is bounded? No. Not? No, but this is actually a, a good question. So, uh, uh, because, so there was a kind of a part of the argument uh, 
Right, so this is part of the argument. So this proposition that I wrote down on, on, on the board, uh, so this holds for any periodic uh, Lie group. But what I need uh, is a family of representations um, for which I can control the reduction modulo p and the density. Okay, so now somehow this G the whole GL2QP theory in a way works because this, that this universal unitary completion is irreducible. Yeah? And this kind of corresponds to, to the fact that there, there is a unique admissible fil filtration. And um, so on one hand, like a part of the argument is very general, the difficulty is finding such a family where you can control reductions. And as far as I know, I mean, apart from some ordinary cases, ordinary Banach space representations, so you can compute the reduction, but apart, apart from this, um, not, not much is known.